Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Monday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and over the weekend, there was a flurry of activity involving Mets players being traded, being signed, um, and um, moving on from their careers in Flushing. Uh, at least one of them had a career in Flushing. Um, the others, not so, not so sure what their uh, futures would have hold would have holded would have held, uh, <laughs> but um, the uh, the returns from these uh, these trades are what they are, and I want to talk about them today, and I want to talk about what these trades mean for the rest of the off season. After uh, after not a lot of activity. Um, the Mets were very active this past weekend. On Saturday, they acquired Keon Broxton from the Milwaukee Brewers, and they signed um, Hector Santiago, a left-handed pitcher, to a uh, minor league contract. Then on Sunday, they traded for uh, J.D. Davis from the Astros, and finally, Sunday afternoon, the Mets traded away Kevin Ploiecki to the Cleveland Indians. Um, none of these are major moves, right? These are these are what I would refer to as depth moves, and they're fine. I mean, whatever. Um, the, the one piece that moved in all of these deals from the Mets, so the Mets ended up trading away six different minor leaguers to acquire effectively two players, um, Broxton from Milwaukee and Davis from the Astros. And in the J.D. Davis trade, the Mets did acquire another minor leaguer. I can't think of his name, but of the six guys that were moved in these two transactions, only one uh, was familiar to me and probably to most of you as well, and that was Bobby Wall. He was the, um, the second chip that the Mets got back from the A's last year when they moved Jerry's Familia at the deadline. Um, I personally would have liked to see the Mets hold on to Wall because he looked like he had some promise, but um, not the case. He will be, uh, he will be in Milwaukee now, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see what he can do uh, with the Brewers. So, what does all this mean for um, for the Mets outfield situation? Bringing in Broxton, um, if you look at his numbers, he profiles as a guy who will be a platoon partner for Juan Lagares. Um, Broxton is an excellent defensive center fielder, but he also has some pop. He hits lefties way better than Lagares uh, has, and Lagares hits righties better than Broxton does. So it's very possible that this trade for Keon Broxton could indicate that the Mets are okay going into the season with Lagares and now perhaps Broxton as a center field platoon. This probably means that the, um, the pursuit of A.J. Pollock is over, which, in my opinion, God bless, I'm so glad. I did not want to see the Mets waste money on A.J. Pollock. Um, now that, of course, I've been saying this, uh, he'll go on to have an MVP season and play 160 games <laughs> but for whomever he goes to, uh, to play with. But, um, no, I, I just, I've said it a million times now, I just didn't want to see the Mets spend money on an injured guy, um, a guy who's often injured, and um, they have a guy like that already, and it's Lagares. And if he's healthy, Lagares costs nine million bucks this year. Broxton costs league minimum. Um, so you know they have a center field platoon with excellent defense, and that's fine until Cespedes comes back, whenever that might be. We just have to cross our fingers and hope that both of these guys can stay on the field. Now, as far as I can tell, and I'm, of course I don't watch Brewers games, um, Broxton doesn't have the injury history that Lagares has. Um, bigger concern is how exposed he will be if he has to take and send it at bats against right-handed pitching. Um, the batting average is not pretty, uh, but again, he's got some pop, he's fast, and he can play a good center field. So um, I, I, I'm not sure that I'm, uh, I agree with this trade, mainly, again, because I, I really thought Bobby Wall had some promise. And it would have been nice for the Mets to have pulled, like, a, a Chapman trade when they when they uh, swapped Chapman to when the Yankees uh, swapped Chapman to the Cubs and then went ahead and re-signed him in the offseason and so they basically got the Cubs prospects and they got their guy back you know the Mets basically would have done the same thing if they would have kept Wall and of course if Wall would have panned out into something uh, of course they have Will Tofe the third baseman at uh, in the minors I think he'll be at AAA 
um, this season. But uh, anyway, I would have liked to see the Mets hold on to Bobby Wall. We'll see how this trade uh, pans out, if Wall turns into anything, or if he just becomes another relief pitcher with Promise, who didn't, didn't pan out. Uh, speaking of prospects with Promise, it didn't pan out. Uh, <laughs> yesterday, the Mets traded Kevin Ploiecki to, uh, to Cleveland. And I was talking to my friend Mike, uh, texting with him yesterday about catching prospects. And Ploiecki was a can't-miss catching prospect. And if you look at his slash line, um, it ain't pretty. It's a 210 career batting average that Kevin Ploiecki has. Um, never hit for pop. Um, was supposed to be a high average doubles hitter. It just it never never panned into and never turned into that kind of player. And my question to my friend Mike in, in a text was, really, do any catching prospects pan out? You know, you go back to really the last decade or so, um, there are so few catching prospects that turn into elite players. Um, there are so few catchers that turn into elite players. Um, it's just a tough position to, to pr uh, project and prospect for. Um, and Ploiecki just becomes another number in that checklist, you know, of guys that never held up to the promise that they showed. Travis Darno is right up there with him, too. I mean, he's... He's now going to officially be the backup to Wilson Ramos. Um, there are some major injury concerns with these two guys behind the plate, as we saw last year. Um, Darno missed the, you know, all but four games with the UCL injury, and uh, the Mets had to rely on um, on Jose Lobaton and Tomas Nito behind the plate. It was an offensive black hole, and uh, that, that that took a big chunk of the season for Ploiecki to come back from his concussion, I'm sorry, from his broken wrist, um, a fluke injury, but still, I mean, he was out, the, the Darno was out, and the Mets were, uh, the Mets were basically fielding a, an automatic out behind the plate. Um, I hope that's not going to be the case this year. Wilson Ramos is certainly a far more accomplished hitter than uh, either of the Mets catchers and any of them that the Mets trotted out there behind the plate last year. So uh, hopefully Ramos can stay healthy and put up the kind of season he did last last year in uh, Tampa Bay and then in Philadelphia as well. Um, I, I, I don't know anything about these two guys that the Mets got back from Cleveland. Um, they, they're just two names. I mean, whatever. Um, I, I, I can't say anything about it. It just, I felt like there was going to be a little bit more to be had for Ploiecki, um, but it goes to show how tough it is to turn a... A, a catching pro a catcher a catching prospect into anything realistic um you know whatever what are you gonna do um the only other thing i want to comment on is jd davis i really like this acquisition um jd davis is a versatile infielder who um doesn't have guaranteed starting you know you got to play me every day sort of uh, uh sort of stuff uh, or that sort of mentality. So I, I like I like bringing in a depth bench, bench piece like this. Um, Davis can play first. He can play third. He's got some pop. Um, Brody seems to really like him. He had some nice comments about him. So I like this acquisition. Again, I don't know anything about the three guys the Mets traded away. And I know even less about the one other guy they got back from Houston. Um, so I think the good news about this, um, this trade is is that, as I had mentioned last week with uh, the Astros pursuing Seth Lugo, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. It looks like the conversations that the teams had um, re revolving around Lugo and perhaps others as well um, ended up turning into this trade. And I'm just hoping that both sides got something that they wanted out of it. And it, 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 I'm just glad to see that the Mets didn't part with Seth Lugo. I think he's far more valuable to them than he is uh, in return for whatever they would get back for him. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for today. Um, I expect the uh, the moves to continue. The Mets are going to be adding uh, at least one other starting pitcher. The name that I read about over the weekend was Derek Holland. We'll see what happens with that this week. Um, I'll be back tomorrow maybe or perhaps Wednesday with um, some, some details about that and some thoughts about uh, other options in the rotation that the Mets could be considering. So until then, 
Uh, I thank you for watching. I appreciate it, as I always do. You can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.